does not necessarily reflect the views of WSIC. Hello and welcome to Dollars and Cents, presented by North Main Financial. I'm your host, Joshua Doby. Thank you so much for hanging with us here, 4 o'clock hour on Thursday. Appreciate so much, especially if you're a 9 to 5 or you're sprinting towards the finish line here. 53 minutes, 36 seconds uh, to get to that magic number at 5 o'clock, and I appreciate so much you hanging with us here on Dollars and Cents, presented by North Main Financial, as we're giving attention to all things economic and financial. And often we're talking about even specific companies, specific specific investments, maybe even styles of investment, the kinds of things that may be a part of your experience, colleagues' experience, members of your family, others you may know. But in doing so, you also recall, as a previous listener to Dollars and Cents, that nothing that we're talking about here is intended as a specific recommendation for you. Meaning that even though we're going into some specifics, we're we're going to be doing it today. We're going to be talking about some companies, some of them probably not in the most positive light, others in a more positive light, that again, none of that is intended as a specific recommendation for you, we strongly, strongly recommend that you reach out to your tax advisor, to your financial advisor, or if you'd like to reach out to us at North Main Financial Group, love to hear from you, love to chat with you about your particular financial situation and to see if there are ways in which we might be able to be helpful to you. Online, you can find us at northmainfinancial.com. That's north like the direction, main like the street, financial.com, northmainfinancial.com. We have a page there where you can leave us your contact information. Let us know the most preferred and desirable ways for us to contact you, again, at northmainfinancial.com. You're also welcome to call us here in the studio. I can't promise that we're going to get to all the questions here today because we've got a pretty jam-packed hour relative to the things that are hitting across our headlines here. But uh, but if you'd like to give us a call in the studio, certainly we'll do our very best to address any questions you may have, especially if we can intertwine them into what we're doing here. 844-STUDIO-4, that's 844-788. 3464, 844-788-3464 here in the studio at WSIC. Love to hear from you. Always want the show to be relevant to the kinds of things that are high on your radar screen, and and so we always love to hear from you. So let us know if there are things that you'd like uh, for us to address, and certainly if they're hitting your headlines as well. All right, let's get into it. What's hot? There's a lot. That, that, that was unintended. I really didn't intend for that to rhyme there, but I may just use that ongoing. But, <laughs> but there's a lot that's out there. See, on fire... That's why producer Bill's so good. See that? Even I know that. Or I'm lit, right? Is, no, I, I, sh- I shouldn't be lit. Is that, is that how the nomenclature goes? I know I'm not up to speed on, on all things that have to do with the current uh, uh, acceptable vernacular. So I'm going to use the old style stuff because that's where I'm most comfortable anyhow. But let's get into it. What's hot? And uh, and we're talking about uh, this first one here. It's, it's hit the headlines a, lo- a lot. I know they were talking about it on Good Morning LKN, which, by the way, Monday to Friday, 7 to 9, Justin, Bill, and Mamie, you guys got to turn into them if you haven't done that. Really a lot of fun. And uh, really good stuff. And they were, but they were touching on this this company uh, here this morning again. And I've uh, been hitting the headlines a lot in my end of the world. Not because they are a huge financial institution on a relative basis, but primarily because of concern about the system overall. And certainly if there is any kind of contagion element. And that is uh, New York Community Bank. NYCB uh, is their ticker symbol. Publicly traded bank. Uh, again, not a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold NYCB, but um, but they've been in the headlines a lot, especially if you uh, pay attention to business news uh, with regards to, uh, well, they came out here, I guess, in January. So this would have been uh, a couple of months ago. And, uh, and, and initially cut the dividend, uh, announced they're going to do some restructuring from a personnel standpoint, had some folks in the C-suite moving around. That definitely spooked the market, definitely uh, took, a, took a hammer to the stock price. Well, there have been a series of events then from that, which have led up to and including, uh, as, as uh, reported by the Wall Street Journal here today, that uh, an, an investor group, a private investor group, so not the federal government, this is not public money, this is not taxpayer money, but a private investor group has agreed to inject over $1 billion of working capital into uh, NYCB in an effort to shore up the finances and obviously for them, for the investor group to be able to make some money over time. And, uh, and what made that even more notable is, uh, is that uh, part of that investor group is a group headed up by Stephen Mnuchin, who is a past secretary tre- treasury of the secretary, excuse me, secretary of the treasury. 
uh, and uh, under a previous administration. So he, his group uh, is uh, is part of the investor group in there, and uh, and again a notable investment. He also has some history. Mnuchin does. Uh, he was actually a part of a group that uh, that bailed out a couple of banks coming out of two thousand eight and two thousand nine. So a lot of history in that end of let's call it distressed financial institutions, and uh, uh, were willing to put up their own uh, capital and an other investors' capital uh, as as part of uh, an injection and infusion to NYCB. So what does that mean for the stock? What does that mean for the bonds? Don't really know yet. The stock has been hammered. If you watch the that that NYCB stock or have seen that here, uh, it's it's down over eighty uh, percent from uh, from where it was. So it it has just been just destroyed in, in the marketplace on the sell side. And uh, but what does that mean? Does that mean that uh, that there's concern about the liquidity aspect of the bank? Probably less so, especially with this capital infusion that's uh, that's now uh, been agreed to. But what does that mean in terms of long-term growth recovery possibilities? Don't know at this point. You know, is, is there something where they delist it and and uh, and pull it private? I doubt it. That's probably not where they're going to be able to make the most uh, impact and uh, and money and return at this point because they are publicly traded. But anything's possible. So you want to kind of keep that on your radar screen. Now, in, in saying that about NYCB, I mentioned at the front end there that you know, relative to other large financial institutions, they're not among the larger ones that's out there. But what really has I would say the attention of the market is where what has really brought NYCB into this place of, of challenge. And that has to do with their holdings in commercial real estate and specifically uh, apartment buildings, rent controlled uh, apartments specifically, that's one segment, but also uh, high rise office tower uh, kinds of things. And, uh, and the concern being, of course, uh, extending beyond NYCB about what that means for the larger commercial real estate market. Now, you've heard me talk a lot here on dollars and cents. I'm going to be talking about it more today uh, about where commercial real estate is right now, and and I have to I have to segment at least a little bit, meaning I have to to draw some delineation uh, in terms of the style of commercial real estate that I'm describing because there are several different styles. Actually, I should have the Chief Justin on here. He could he could give you a much more elegant uh, kind of look at it than what I'm going to be describing. But I'm really talking about the high rise office tower kind of stuff that we see in our more urban areas. So we have them here in Charlotte, you know, the, the real skyscraper uh, kinds of builds and, uh, uh, and about the concern, and I'll, I'll say it as a concern, I'll say I have concern because of where we are from a vacancy standpoint in, in a lot of our high rise towers. So the national average right now hit a 40 year high, bumped into 20% here a couple of months ago. And uh, actually, I was just reading another uh, data collection here this morning, uh, talking specifically about the city of Pittsburgh. And, uh, um, you know, we also have offices there as well. And so I keep a pretty close contact with all things happening there. They just hit 27% in terms of uh, in terms of office vacancy, again, in the high rise office tower end of things. And a lot of concern, not only about uh, the vacancy, but also in terms of the revaluation of those buildings, meaning the values coming down and and then specifically the impact on property taxes and what that would mean for public schools for public services etc so uh, a, a big deal and, and 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 I'm not highlighting Pittsburgh for any particular reason I just happen to be looking at those data points but we have those issues here in Charlotte we have the, those issues in other cities around the country to produce that average of about 20 percent vacancy again in those high-rise uh, skyscraper style office buildings so Again, looking at NYCB, a concern, definitely. I mean, definitely a concern about them as, as an entity, but more so as we're looking at the commercial real estate end of things, because there are a lot of implications from that. You know, is it that uh, businesses are shrinking their balance sheets intentionally uh, because of some concern about the future? Is it because maybe just a shift in workforce? You know, not nearly as much going into the office as there used to be. We're going to talk about that in the second segment. And I appreciate so much you hanging with us here on Dollars and Cents here at WSIC. We'll have more of Dollars and Cents with Certified Financial Planner Joshua Doby following these brief messages on 105.9 100.7 WSIC. Well, dry weather has made a return for a couple of days before our next wet weather system kicks off the upcoming weekend. We'll see clouds to start our Thursday. Mix of clouds and sun, though, by this afternoon. We'll get warm again as temperatures climb into the upper 60s near 70. We'll be dry again on Friday with temperatures in the upper 60s, but our Saturday will be wet. Drying it out again, though, with sunshine and a bit cooler by Sunday. That's your forecast from the WSIC Weather Center. I'm meteorologist Chase Myers. 
here is your WSIC community calendar. Grill Fest is back April 25th through the 28th at Wilkes Community College. Featuring nearly 100 performers, including Old Crow Medicine Show, Sam Bush, Turnpike Troubadours, the Teskey Brothers, Nickel Creek, and more. Tickets and information at MerleFest.org. Listen each morning to Good Morning LKN for your chance to win tickets. Coin collectors, get ready. The Statesville Coin and Currency Show is coming to the Statesville Civic Center March 16th and 17th. Featuring over 60 tables of some of the finest coins around. For more info, contact Bill Brewer of Carolina Prospectors in Statesville. The Statesville Coin and Currency Show, Statesville Civic Center, March 16th and 17th. Eagle Rentals in Statesville is celebrating you and the wonderful community they serve. Come to Eagle Rentals Customer Appreciation Day, March 16th from noon until 4 p.m. Fun for the whole family. Kids and adults are welcome. Eagle Rentals, Customer Appreciation Day, March 16th, 3435 East Broad Street in Saintsville. Want to see a Tyrannosaurus Rex? How about a Triceratops? Dinosaur World Live is coming to Kane Center for the Arts, Friday, March 29th. That's not the only fun family adventure coming to the Kane Center for the Arts. Dinosaur World Live, Friday, March 29th. For tickets and to see the entire spring lineup, visit canearts.org. That's C-A-I-N arts.org. Have an event you would like to tell people about? Yard sales, estate sales, and everything in between? Visit WSICnews.com and click on events to submit your event today. Now more of Dollars and Cents with Certified Financial Planner Joshua Doby on 105.9, 100.7 WSIC. Hello and welcome back to Dollars and Cents presented by North Main Financial. I'm your host, Joshua Doby. Thank you so much for hanging with us into the second quarter of today's show, Football Reference. It's going to be soon. I mean, the, the weather's the bingo. We're starting to get into the warmer weather. Warmer weather in my world means we're not too far away from training camp. Training camp is preseason. Pre it, it's going to be here. I mean, it's it's going to be here. But but before that time, I mean, we're already into it with baseball. I mean, I I was watching a little Grapefruit League uh, baseball here over the past uh, over the past weekend, and uh, man, I like it. I, I like now now you should know I'm a Red Sox fan. So uh, so the, uh, the my Red Sox are that they're they're in a world of hurt, and I mean that almost literally in terms of the folks who are already out for the year. I mean, we end, we were last in the last in the, in the uh, division last year. Can't say it's looking optimistic uh, for this year, producer Bill. So now my are, heart right now. That's right. <laughs> now, are, are you are, are you Braves guy? I am um, an Orioles guy. I know. I know. I don't like to share that. I, I did know you were an Orioles guy. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's not until just recently I was able to come out publicly it's, and say yeah. that. <laughs> you know what? And, and you have to watch it. Like you said, like I, I don't like to, you know, so right. run around that I'm a Red Sox guy, but right. Um, Unfortunately, the the Orioles seem to be winning a lot of games that. Don't really impact the regular <laughs> season right now, but it's fun to watch. I'm excited. You know, and and, and the Orioles have a great team. They they are going to be fun to watch uh, here uh, here coming into the season. So I, I may have to jump on that bandwagon because uh, there is not much about which to cheer on uh, on my sort my side of the ledger. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna pivot from sports and go right into uh, another one of our favorite topics, and that is you got it, food. Now I heard also. I feel like I'm plagiarizing. Basically, Good Morning LKN because uh, you guys are stealing all my material uh, here th <laughs> here this morning. Uh, when talking about Wendy's, right? Wendy's restaurants, drive-through uh, hamburgers. Uh, you know, Dave uh, Dave Thomas, the the founder of of Wendy's, publicly traded company. Ticker symbol Walter Edward Nancy W E N. That is not a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold Wendy's in uh, in any way. But I mean, how how can produce? How can this not hit your radar screen? I mean, I, I don't know how anybody uh, who, who enjoys, well, I, maybe folks don't enjoy uh, cheeseburgers as much as I do. Uh, but It hit my stomach today. I mean, did, so you, you, you weren't waiting around. You literally went after it. Yeah, the boss man uh, was able to bring me back a, a brown paper bag of that's what I'm talking worth about. Worth about $3 if what I if what I read is through <laughs> is true. Yeah. Well, because the, the double, I think yep. I so the Dave double is yep. 2 bucks right. and the Dave single is a dollar. A dollar. I mean, 3 uh, of them. Are you kidding me right now? Yeah. So so if if you don't know this folks, check this out. 
And uh, we'll talk about the reasons why Wendy's may or may not be doing this right now. They said it was due to March Madness. Mm, maybe. <laughs> uh, that, that's, uh, we'll, we'll maybe take them at their word uh, on that. But, I mean, they, they come out uh, with the cheeseburgers, right? A double for $2, a single for a dollar. I mean, I was trying to think. There aren't too many. We used to have, I don't think I'm dating myself too poorly here. We used to have dollar menus at a lot of our fast food restaurants. I know McDonald's really uh, had, uh, really uh, pushed that for a lot of years. And then I know Burger King, Wendy's, and others uh, brought on their versions of that. Of course, that's long gone, primarily due to inflation. But uh, I was trying to think, there aren't too many things, single food items, for a dollar that you can get at any fast food. No, but it does seem just like yesterday. I mean, right? I mean, right. That, that was, I mean, the, the dollar, I'll tell you, the dollar menu at, uh, at at McDonald's or Burger King, that was my go-to. The good old days. I'm, oh, I mean, it, it takes me back. It literally <laughs> makes me feel warm and fuzzy uh, in, 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 in my stomach. I mean, it was, I mean, you just went to it. I mean, I, of course, I used it as an opportunity to have like a buffet. Right. Right. I mean, I mean, it's only a dollar. So, yes, I will have the chicken nuggets. And, yes, I will have the French fries. And, yes, I will have the uh, the junior cheeseburger. And, and on and on. And, yeah. and, and just, and, you know, then the next day, then change it up a little bit. Right. You know, just make your own little mini buffet. I know. We, we do get excited about food around here. <laughs> but uh, but very interesting. Uh, very interesting for that. Of course, you know, uh, we talked about Wendy's here a week or two ago. And they came out with their dynamic pricing model, uh, and it was picked up by the media and most of the internet public uh, as uh, as being an, an excuse for surge pricing uh, with regards to uh, to the Wendy's uh, drive through menu. Is that true? Is that not true? Uh, that you know they're trying to make peace with uh, with the public now by coming out with some inexpensive cheeseburgers uh, for this month. I'll tell you at a certain level, I don't care. I mean, it's uh, what I, the only thing I'm worried about is two dollar doubles. And one yes. one dollar This has a nice ring to it. It just does. I mean, boy. I mean, you think about. It. There has to be. Now I'm speaking out of ignorance here, but there has to be still reasonable margin at those levels. I mean, I, I know it's it's easy for me to say. I'm obviously not a franchisee or franchise or uh, of of any uh, business. Certainly, just not tell me food. how many times I have to go. I, I you know, be, I, that's I'll what make I'm it work. The we'll make the math work. The volume <laughs> has to be astronomical. I mean, it really does. I have no idea, but it has to be astronomical. And I think one of the ways in which Wendy's is trying to mitigate just the, for you know, no pun intended here, surge of uh, of folks coming is you have to order through the app. And, and I think one of the reasons, I would guess, one of the reasons why you got to order through the app is they want to know what's coming. You know, they don't want, you know, 200 cars sitting through you know, at the drive through I would think. And so maybe they give themselves a little breathing room to be able to prepare for that. But that, that, that has to be good. I, I mean, it has to, well, I mean, it is good in terms of out taste, but that has to be good for business. It's going to be interesting to see. Because they're publicly traded, we'll be able to see pretty much in the next quarterly report that they have about what the impact was from a revenue profit margin uh, standpoint. Uh, it, it's it's going to be interesting because, again, it, uh, to producer Bill's point, it uh, uh, takes you back uh, to those uh, those glorious dollar menu days, which uh, just don't have the opportunity to experience uh, anymore. And I know you guys are talking about Five Guys as well. And uh, uh, I also do have to, I have to raise my hand as having a weakness also for Five Guys Members of my immediate family have weakness for Five Guys, but it is a different financial experience. Holy mackerel, it is. And I'm not, say, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, good or bad. It's just different. Hey, it's, I'll, I'll complain the whole through the whole bag of fries. I, you know what I mean? But it's, I, with a know, smile on my face. And they are good. And maybe it is the peanuts. I don't know. I mean, it's it's those little things, you know, that, right. that attract, that differentiate a little bit. And uh, and and I heard uh, I heard. Uh, uh, the Chief Justin saying he didn't mind about putting his hand in, into the big Ben. I don't either. That doesn't slow yeah, me down. Yeah, no, I'm not no, about that. Not, not at all. doesn't slow me down in the least. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I'm probably running to the door whenever, right. as in running in the door to uh, to go ahead and get them. All right. So uh, so Wendy's. All right, if you're looking, and I'm not an advocate for Wendy's. I'm, I am an advocate for cheap cheeseburgers, though, and you may want to take a look at that. All right. Let's uh, let's keep going here. Airlines. And, uh, and when, we're look, when we're looking at the airlines, so the airline business, and, and I can say this uh, of the publicly traded airlines, what we most commonly call the legacy carriers now, we really only have three. Through all the consolidation we've had through the years, there are really only three left. You got United, you got Delta, and you have American. Uh, yes, there are other players, but when we think of uh, legacy carriers, the largest of the, uh, the, the um, uh, 
airline companies that are out there, those are the ones that uh, that, that come to mind quickly. And, and I'm saying what I'm going to say next because if you've hopped on a plane going through just about any airport right now, the, the experience is challenging. And I, and I can say that. So let me speak positively first. I am very thankful relative to our uh, geographic location that Charlotte is a hub for American. Truly am because you have so many opportunities to get direct flights to wherever you're going. And uh, yes, you do have to take American for a significant portion of those, but again, just the opportunity to be able to fly direct to so many areas. And you know, if you live somewhere else, I mean, if, for example, if you were living uh, in a Pittsburgh or a Raleigh or a Columbus, Ohio uh, kind of space, you're probably running through Charlotte if you're coming anywhere to the southeast uh, for sure. So, uh, so it's you know, we're, we're it's a blessing. So I have to say that first. That being said, and I and I say this, I I fly a lot. I fly very nearly every week. And it is not a pleasant experience. And this is not speaking poorly of the companies or the personnel or anything like that. It's just the numbers. I mean, we're, we're just smushing more people onto fewer planes uh, and with fewer opportunities to fly than, than ever. And now, I was, I was reading this. So, Producer Bill, I think you, ju- you just hopped off a plane here a couple of days ago, uh, cross-country kind of thing. Indeed. And one of the things, this was, uh, again, reported, I think this was the Wall Street Journal, maybe Barron's, for, forgive me for not having the uh, appropriate uh, bibliography here, but I would say uh, that the, the commentary was that uh, in terms of how gate agents are counting carry-on items, you know, usually they go through the spiel, right? So it's uh, one rollerboard and one handheld item, I want to say, like, sure. like yep. a purse, right? Well, apparently they've had some real difficulty with folks with these different kinds of bags and different things that they're carrying on with them. And one, one of the things that jumped out to me, and I, I, I'll admit to not paying a whole lot of attention sometimes to, to other people whenever I'm standing at the gate because I just want to get on the plane and get going. Sure. Uh, but apparently a lot of people bring on uh, pillows, blankets, um, uh, neck roll kinds of things. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and and then also have things like uh, forgive me if I'm missing the the nomenclature here crossbody uh, uh, yes. bags you know yes. what I'm talking about oh, okay yeah. uh, so crossbody bags in addition to purses carry ons briefcases rollerboards and apparently so now the uh, the airlines have become much more specific because mm-hmm. it used again I'm just showing my age. Like a rollerboard and a briefcase, or a rollerboard and a purse, or a purse style right. kind of thing. Well, now apparently there's a whole list where all of those things I just mentioned, whether it's a blanket or or a pillow or neck roll, for some of these, especially for Southwest, they highlighted Southwest here, ticker symbol LUV, not a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold Southwest, uh, that they're counting those items as, as carry-on. Carry on. Yeah. And, and apparently they're getting some pretty negative pushback on it because they're saying, well, you know, this isn't taking up space or I'm keeping it in my seat or it's not impacting others. I kind of understand that. Sure. It'd be one thing if you're stuffing more in those overhead bins, which are already so ridiculously overstuffed now because people like me, uh, but you know, putting uh, basically all, all of our earthly possessions into a, into a carry on right. and, and stuffing it in. So they're already maxed out in terms of the overhead bins. But, uh, but I, I gotta, I, I understand rationally when folks say, well, if it's just with me in my seat, what does it matter? Sure. I mean, it's, not, it's not like they're bringing on an anvil or something like that that's going right. to tilt the weight of the plane or anything like that. I don't know. I, I, I found that to be interesting, and I'm sure there's a good reason for it. I'm sure they came out with something uh, that said that, you know, that we got so much additional junk taking up space, whether it's foot space or maybe challenges with being able to move in the event of an emergency. I, I, I don't doubt any of that, that that may have been in the mix. But I thought that was kind of interesting because, uh, well, and, and maybe the airlines have felt like they have some space to do this because – the demand, and I say this because we look at the 10 Qs and the 10 Ks uh, for for the publicly traded airlines. I mean, the demand continues to be there. It's uh, it, it's it's pretty amazing uh, to to look at uh, how much demand continues to be there. Uh, once once COVID ended and there was more uh, there were more folks who were wanting to fly. I got it, but it's still going. Very interesting to see. Well, friends, we're rapidly approaching the halfway mark of today's Dollars and Cents show presented by North Main Financial. I appreciate you spending time with us as we're giving attention to all things financial and economic. Hang with us as we hear from our sponsors coming back here on WSIC. Keep it right here. Dollars and Cents with certified financial planner Joshua Doby will return shortly on 1059 100.7 WSIC. Well, we can keep the dry weather around for one more day. A partly cloudy sky tonight. Temperatures dip down to around 50. The outlying spots in farms may even see upper 40s. 
by early Friday morning. Clouds will pick it up Friday, but it's mostly dry day and weather. Rain, though, is on the way. Friday high temperatures in the mid-60s. Saturday will start wet. A lot of rain on the way as we stay cool around 60, but it'll taper off Saturday evening. We're dry and sunny for Sunday. That's your forecast for the WSIC Weather Center. I'm meteorologist Chase Myers. Since 1931, Duncan Heating and Air Conditioning has been serving the Lake Norman area with quality service and support. Highly trained technicians and quality American standard heating and air conditioning systems. Duncan Heating and Air believes in honesty, integrity, getting the job done right the first time, and happy, loyal customers. Duncan Heating and Air Conditioning, 704-872-2431. Schedule your appointment to service your heating system today. I love your new outfit. I got it at Diamond Mine Apparel and Accessories. They have a wonderful selection of ladies' and men's apparel. Where are they located? 920 Davie Avenue. Their hours are Wednesday through Saturday, 10 to 6. Diamond Mine Apparel and Accessories. Discover, this is Daniela. Hi, it's Jennifer Coolidge. I just want to thank you for making me feel so special. I earned cash back on debit for my dinner party groceries. That's great, but with Discover Cashback Debit, we give everyone cash back on everyday purchases. Anything else I can help you with? Do you like asparagus and mushroom sorbet? I've got leftovers. Introducing Discover Cashback Debit, a checking account with cash back. It pays to Discover. Eligibility in terms at discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. I can't believe tax season is here already. But look at all this info I have to enter. Phil's small accounting firm is growing in numbers. Why didn't I take that typing class in high school? A data entry specialist could really help him in a crunch. I got blisters on my fingers. Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Positive tone for stocks today. And you can thank Fed Chair Jay Powell for that. Powell testifying on Capitol Hill, suggesting the Fed is getting close to the confidence it needs to start lowering interest rates. Meantime, Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester says the central bank should be able to start cutting rates later this year, though she says she wants to see more evidence inflation is cooling first. Shares of NVIDIA sitting at a new record high. That's as the frenzy over AI and chip makers intensifies again. Watch out, though. Mizuho Securities is warning the gains for semiconductor companies could be dangerously excessive. And United Airlines is putting a ground stop on pilot hiring and also suspending training classes for new aviators. That's after pulling the Boeing MAX 10 aircraft from its flight plans for the year because of safety problems, including that Alaska Airlines plane with the door plug coming out mid-flight in January. United expects to restart pilot training classes in July. Denise Pellegrini, Bloomberg Radio. We're back now with more of Dollars and Cents with your host, certified financial planner, Joshua Doby on 105.9 100.7 WSIC. Hello and welcome back to Dollars and Cents presented by North Main Financial. I'm your host, Joshua Doby. Thank you so much for hanging with us here. Second half of today's Dollars and Cents show. And, and I appreciate Thank you. I, I love that guy. Thank you, Producer Bill. You make me sound a whole lot better than I am. And that's just, that's just really nice. But I appreciate so much hanging with us into the second half here as we're giving attention to all things financial and economic. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Joshua Doby. I'm a certified financial planner or CFP professional. Been in this business. I know. Wait for it. Because of my youthful complexion, you're not going to believe what I'm going to say next. 28 years. 28 years. I remember when I was 28 years old. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. I started out in this business when I was 40. No, that's not true. That's, I wish I was true. <laughs> Unbelievable. Even when I say that out loud, I'm still amazed at it. So, interesting. Because I look at my kids, I'm looking like, well, you guys get older, but I don't. No, not true. That's that's definitely not true, especially when I'm looking at old photographs. Oh, my gosh. that was That's that's a sobering time. Anyhow, appreciate so much you hanging with us here. If you'd like to give us a call in the studio and uh, and maybe something hitting your radar screen, headlines, uh, those kinds of things. Can't promise when to get to it, but certainly if I can weave it in to, uh, to the discussion, I'd love to be able to touch on points that are important to you, our listeners uh, here at WSIC, and uh, to make sure that you hear the very best of, of what we have here. And I want to make sure that it's as relevant as it can be to the things that are most important to you. 844-STUDIO-4, that's 844-788-3464, 844-788-3464. I know I have to make a disclosure here very quickly as I'm repeating that phone number. 
that every time that I'm repeating a phone number, I do think of a rotary dial phone. I know, that tells you exactly how old I am, but I do think of that and the fact, I know, little memory lane there, right, Producer Bill? Uh, a rotary phone, and, uh, and I know, I know that a significant portion of you, especially if you're watching us on the socials, probably have no idea what I'm describing except uh, as a picture on, uh, that you bring up on Google. I get it. It's okay. I, uh, I, I, st- I still have warm, fuzzy memories about that, just like I do for Wendy's Cheeseburgers, which we talked about in the first half of today's show. All right, so we, we, you got cheeseburgers, you got banks, and, and you got airlines. So you know, uh, and, and you got football and baseball. Uh, so that's, that's a, just what we've done here in the first half. I think that's pretty much the perfect hit. Uh, is uh, as far as content is concerned. But let's keep moving. Uh, as, as we're looking at, uh, just th- this is kind of interesting. And, and I say that, I guess, because I'm going to talk about it next, but, but also because I think it's, it, it, it's, it's hit my radar screen. And you can make an argument, is this economic, financial? I think it is. Uh, and I'm, and I'm going to be looking uh, in, in the next couple of minutes here at some news out of, a, I should say additional news, out of Dartmouth University. Producer Bill, do you hear this uh, coming out of Dartmouth? Um, it wasn't it wasn't hugely reported, bec- and, and frankly, it was bigger news when it first broke that this was going to be a possibility. But the Dartmouth men's basketball team has unionized. Very interesting, very interesting. Now this this is now ch- take this against the context of uh, that we live in a wholesale different world insofar as college and university athletics are concerned from even just a couple of years ago. I mean, certainly from pre-COVID. Uh, we, we are in a comprehensively different world with the introduction of NIL, name, image, likeness, money. I mean, we, you know, some of the biggest names out there. I mean, you're talking about half million, million dollars a year uh, for college athletes, for the, for the opportunity to be able to use uh, their name, image, and life. Boy, you, you're, you're right about that. I mean, I think we were talking about Caitlin Clark, that, that sharpshooter on Iowa women's basketball team. Uh, just, oh, yeah. uh, just recently became the all-time leading scorer. Uh, in, in, uh, it's not just Division One, is it? Is it all? Is it Division One, Two, II, and Three, or is it Division One? I know uh, it's Division One, both yeah. men and, and women. Women's. That's right. Yes. That's right. Because she passed Pete Maravich uh, of, uh, of of bygone years there at LSU, and uh, so anyhow. But I'm saying that to say I was you were somebody was telling me seven hundred fifty or a million dollars a year or something that she's getting right now. I mean, it's a huge amount of money that uh, that she that she's getting for uh, for. I mean, literally. I mean, again, college basketball. It's 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 amazing kind of stuff. So I'm saying all of that to give some context to this news that's coming out of uh, that, that's coming out of uh, Dartmouth, and uh, and again looking at at, at 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 unionizing. The idea being that the, and and again this is no disrespect to anybody who's gone to Dartmouth or of the Dartmouth men's basketball team. That's not the first place that I would look. I think if I was interested in sponsoring a team or putting up money from an exposure standpoint. Right. I mean, and again, it's, I'm not speaking poorly of them. I, I mean, I'm sure everybody in the state of New Hampshire, maybe all of New England, uh, pays, pays attention to them. But I, I don't know. I'm looking at the Tar Heels, maybe. I mean, I, I think, you know, Duke University, maybe. Uh, you know, that, that would be, and yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, a homer when it comes to North Carolina teams. But I think exposure-wise, it's reasonable to say ACC, uh, sure. plus Big Ten, yes. maybe. So give me Michigan uh, or Ohio State or, or, you know, if you do the SEC, give me Kentucky. Or, you know, I would think those would be But So I'm not real sure why, why this pursuit has been made. And again, this news broke actually last, last year. Uh, when it was first said that they were going, they were going to pursue this and look at it, and now I guess it has come to fruition. So there is some kind of negotiating body now of the players to the university relative to how they should be compensated for playing college men's basketball. Wow, those are nightmare meetings for I, faculty. <laughs> I can't imagine. I mean, you got you got to employ, and I do know that that univer- colleges and universities have done this. You got to employ a whole different department. Because sure. there's nobody in a traditional college or university setting, I think that's that's really built for not taken away from anybody who's uh, who's an employee there. Just they're not built for that. It'd be kind of like if somebody handed me a wrench and and pointed me towards you know the space shuttle and said, "Well, fix her so we can get to the moon." Well, I have no idea uh, what I'm doing. So I think it'd be that kind of experience. But uh, but you got to employ lawyers. You got to employ maybe even financial advisors for uh, for that kind of thing. I mean, certainly. I mean, how do you value it? That's that's the point, right. I guess. When it comes to NIL, and that's you know, you can make this argument in any market, right? But what makes a market? Markets are are determined, yes, based upon supply demand, but more upon agreement of value. And so, when we're looking at something like Dartmouth men's basketball team, 
how do you come up with a number? I mean, do you say, I mean, I guess, do we have enough data at this point in the NIL experience to be able to say, well, you know, you are worth such and such. I guess so. I guess that's how we have any NIL contracts, although some people had to be first in order to establish the market. But how does that market move? And, uh, and, and this is the other question. Producer Bill, you may know the answer to this. What happens if you get hurt? Like, what, as, as, as an athlete, I know professional athletes, they got gargantuan disability and insurance policies. I mean, they, I mean, they, and, and owners require them, actually. Uh, owners of professional sports franchises require them to protect their investments, obviously. And I completely understand all of that. But I don't know that there's that kind of, maybe there is, and I'm just speaking ignorantly. Yeah, they just uh, seem to have opened up a can of uh, worms that I, I, I don't know. know where this leads. I don't know where it goes. I'm either. having trouble even thinking of the Dartmouth mascot. You know, I was just, I, I believe their colors are green and white. I, I do know that. Okay, so so we're on the same page there. Is it? Is it like a, I, I, well, like eight a, four four studio uh, four? four yeah. Yeah, yeah, call it call it <laughs> to the studio here because I was going to say something like bison, but that's just because producer Bill and I were just talking about bison here a few moments ago. Uh, but uh, but yeah, eight four four studio four. If you know what uh, what the mascot is for Dartmouth, or if you're a Dartmouth grad, you may have thoughts to it and uh, uh, about what this means or or the whole nil uh, aspect of things. But coming to all, again all things financial and economic here on dollars and cents, it it has and will continue to change radically what the sports landscape looks like for, uh, especially, I was going to say for big-time college athletics, but really all college athletics. And again, not taking away from Dartmouth, but I don't think Dartmouth is going to be on ESPN tonight. I don't think. I mean, maybe they are. Maybe I'm, I'm missing my guess here. But, uh, but those teams that, that do have such huge economic interests in, the, in those kinds of things, because you've heard us talk about this, you know, especially, and yes, I am, I am weak for, uh, for football, but I mean... <laughs> Big time college football, billion dollar television contracts. It's it's amazing the amount of money that's that that goes into this. So it's we're not talking about rounding error or lunch money or the, no 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 no. This is this is very serious, very large scale money. So it's going to be interesting to see. So I raise it, yes indeed, ring in the register. Uh, but it's going to be very interesting to see how this continues to matriculate, because right now in many ways it is the wild west. I mean that's. Yes, we have some rules uh, regarding, but not too many, and uh, and pretty much kind of like what uh, what Dartmouth just did. We're getting these new experiences, these things that haven't been done previously, and now if you're like me, you're just kind of looking around, saying, "Okay, well, what does that mean? Now, <laughs> what are the obligations? What are the opportunities? What are the downfalls or liabilities associated with it?" So we're going to watch it. It's uh, it, it's going to change the landscape. And boy, if you're a high school athlete right now, uh, looking at uh, playing sports in college, it is a wholesale different experience. From the time when producer Bill and I were were, were looking at at college athletics, so this was this was whatever was the opposite of on my radar screen. I was just hoping to get a jersey uh, and, uh, and, and an opportunity uh, on a field there. So big stuff. So again, some news coming out of Dartmouth with regards to uh, the unionization efforts. All right, I want to uh, pivot off a subject a little bit, and uh, and I want to come to to what to know. And this this subject, or the, excuse me, this segment. Uh, on what to know. We, we like to talk about here on Dollars and Cents those things which we hope are part of your experience or can be helpful in clarifying some things because sometimes I'm just motoring through a set of acronyms or, or, or specific investments, investment styles, and I don't always explain, slow down and explain what exactly they are. And, and I think that's important to do. And I think that's important to do because not everybody is you know, shoulders deep like we are here at North Main Financial in, in going through this kind of stuff. So, uh, so I'm going to tee up the, uh, the, the frame here. I'm going to tee this up a little bit, and then we're going to get into it in the last segment. But it's about ETFs, ETFs, acronym e Edward Tom Frank, ETFs, Exchange Traded Funds. And, uh, and just like the name suggests, these are funds, most often tracking an index. We'll talk about that in the next segment as well. Tracking an index and, uh, and are traded on exchanges, just like stocks. And, uh, and so you can trade them on a, on a minute by minute, second by second kind of basis, which makes them different from more traditional open and closed end mutual funds. That's a sec separate segment. We'll do that in another show. But, uh, but exchange traded funds, what are they? Uh, are they appropriate? May or may not be, but it's certainly good, I think, to know about them because of how many dollars are involved with them. You may even have them inside of your retirement plan. Kind of interesting stuff. We're going to touch on it here in the next segment. But before then, I'm going to take a deep breath as we hear from our sponsors. Thank you so much for tuning in here to Dollars and Cents. Hang with us as we go to break. Back in a minute here on WSIC. There's more of Dollars and Cents with certified financial planner Joshua Doby on the way from 105.9, 100.7, WSIC. 
Well, we can keep the dry weather around for one more day. A partly cloudy sky tonight. Temperatures dip down to around 50. The outlying spots in farms may even see upper 40s by early Friday morning. Clouds will thicken up Friday, but it's a mostly dry day of weather. Rain, though, is on the way. Friday high temperatures in the mid-60s. Saturday will start wet. A lot of rain on the way. As we stay cool around 60, but it'll taper off Saturday evening. We're dry and sunny for Sunday. That's your forecast from the WSIC Weather Center. I'm meteorologist Chase Myers. Here is your WSIC community calendar. Merle Fest is back April 25th through the 28th at Wills Community College. Featuring nearly 100 performers, including Old Crow Medicine Show, Sam Bush, Turnpike Troubadours, the Tasky Brothers, Nickel Creek, and more. Tickets and information at MerleFest.org. Listen each morning to Good Morning LKN for your chance to win tickets. Coin collectors, get ready. The Statesville Coin and Currency Show is coming to the Statesville Civic Center March 16th and 17th. Featuring over 60 tables of some of the finest coins around. For more info, contact Bill Brewer of Carolina Prospectors in Statesville. The Statesville Coin and Currency Show, Statesville Civic Center, March 16th and 17th. Eagle Rentals in Statesville is celebrating you and the wonderful community they serve. Come to Eagle Rentals Customer Appreciation Day, March 16th from noon until 4 p.m. Fun for the whole family. Kids and adults are welcome. Eagle Rentals Customer Appreciation Day, March 16th, 3435 East Broad Street in Statesville. Want to see a Tyrannosaurus Rex? How about a Triceratops? Dinosaur World Live is coming to Kane Center for the Arts, Friday, March 29th. That's not the only fun family adventure coming to the Kane Center for the Arts. Dinosaur World Live, Friday, March 29th. For tickets and to see the entire spring lineup, visit canearts.org. That's C-A-I-N-Arts.org. Have an event you would like to tell people about? Yard sales, estate sales, and everything in between? Visit WSICnews.com and click on events to submit your event today. Making your money make sense. Dollars and Cents with CFB Joshua Doby on 105.9-100.7 WSIC. Hello and welcome back to Dollars and Cents presented by North Main Financial. I'm your host, Joshua Doby. Thank you so much. Hang on with us. Fourth quarter, we're in the stretch run. Here we are, 11 minutes, 56 seconds. If you're a 9 to 5 appreciate so much you hanging with us as you're getting to the finish line here. Hopefully bringing you some good content uh, with regards to all things financial and economic again here on Dollars and Cents presented by North Main Financial. Just before we went to break, they were talking about ETFs, exchange traded funds here on the segment of what to know, those kinds of things that we hope are, are helpful to you just in giving you a little bit more definition, understanding of some financial terms that you may bump into them. Hey, you may even have uh, an ETF. You may not even know what it is. We find that a lot. You'd be amazed that folks don't actually know what they own sometimes. But an ETF, exchange traded fund, just as I mentioned as we were going to break there, but to reiterate it, exchange traded fund, it's a fund often tracking an index. So it usually is a passive investment in that the constituency of the ETF or what the, what the fund actually owns itself does not change very much. Uh, now, there are active ETFs which have uh, literal changes inside of them constantly. Uh, that's another segment. This I'm talking about the more passive ones that track an index like the S&P 500, like the NASDAQ, like the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, so it's tracking an index, but the fund shares themselves, you can trade on a second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour uh, sort of experience, as opposed to the more traditional mutual funds that only price one time a day. So it's a fund that basically you can trade like a stock. That's, that's really the, the quick and easy and dirty way of, uh, of looking at it. And, uh, and it's, they've become very, very popular uh, for a couple of reasons I would offer up here over the last, let's say, 10 years or so, uh, where they really have, have escalated a lot in terms of their usage. One is because they usually have very, very low internal expenses. So I think that is attractive and should be attractive. And when it comes to the expense experience, uh, you definitely want to be mindful and conscious of that. Second thing is, I think because of their liquidity for the largest ones, not all ETFs are very liquid, meaning that some don't trade very much. 
when we're talking about liquidity, meaning those things that trade a lot would have a higher liquidity, those things that don't trade uh, so much, we would say are more illiquid or less liquid uh, in the market. So you want to be in ones, in my opinion, that are more liquid because easier to sell and they have tighter spreads or they have tighter differences between the bid and the ask price, which is a whole segment in and of itself. We'll get into that. We'll talk about that on a future Dollars and Cents show. We want to make sure that you hang around uh, for uh, for that opportunity coming up on a future date. But when we're looking at ETFs here and we're, and we're understanding what they are, a lot of folks use them inside of their portfolios uh, as investments to be able to track an index, to be able to, uh, to, be able to map or to provide some uh, index performance inside of their portfolios and obviously wanting those things to appreciate over the long term. But ETF, exchange traded fund, again, a fund essentially that tracks an index in most instances that trades like a stock. So that's what you have there for, uh, for ETF. All right, I know, and you want me to get into the markets. I, I hear that all the time from you. And uh, and that's, that's absolutely. We usually save that for the fourth quarter here because I like for you to hang around. So, uh, so we hold on until the fourth quarter uh, to be able to get into market stuff. Amazing. Gosh, uh, just before I was uh, coming online here, if you happen to be listening to the live broadcast or if you're uh, listening to the podcast as this uh, was recorded, uh, but just looking at the technology sector, my gosh, I'm looking at a company like NVIDIA, and this is not a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold NVIDIA in any way, shape, or form, ticker symbol Nancy Victor David Alpha, NVDA. Unbelievable. And, and I say that not just to highlight NVIDIA, but uh, because they're the, one of the largest companies now that are traded on the U.S. stock exchanges, but also the semiconductor or computer chip um, industry overall, and certainly all the companies inside of there. Again, not a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any other companies in, in, that are in semiconductor business uh, or computer chip business. But boy, anything that is close to AI, coming to another acronym, uh, artificial intelligence, anything that is considered to be uh, something that powers artificial intelligence or at the forefront of the art artificial intelligence movement growth as an industry, boy, it's um, it, it's it's heady times uh, in in a positive kind of way. Now, you probably if you're watching me on the socials here, you know uh, kind of where I'm going with this. I do get queasy. I do. I know. I'm I'm more conservative. You're probably much more aggressive, and that's why you're going to do famously better than anything I'm going to recommend here. But I do get queasy. I get queasy in both directions. I get queasy when when things get overbought and when they get oversold. Not because I'm concerned about where they are, but because I know what happens next at some point. Now, full disclosure, I thought it would have happened by now. I thought we would have had more of a technical sell-off or a technical balancing, uh, especially in the technology sector. Uh, when I say technical sell-off, I mean basically the things have gone up for so long or increased uh, for so long that folks just start taking profits. So it's not fundamental. So technical as opposed to fundamental. Technical is really just looking at a chart and saying, well, it's really gone up for a long time. Let's sell and take some gains. Fundamental has to do with the company or the actual entity itself. Uh, what are the prospects there? What are the um, analytic points that are important? How do they do financially? Is it a good long-term investment? Um, how does the discounted rate, uh, how does the discounted cash flow look? You know, all of those good kinds of things in, in looking at a fundamental kind of analytic. I'm talking about a technical analytic, which basically charts, looking at them and saying, boy, things have really done well. We should sell and take some gains. We haven't had that yet, at least not in mass. That's not to say for every company. I mean, my goodness, if you as if you were listening to the first segment of today's Dollars and Cents show, if you own New, uh, New York Community Bank about three weeks ago, and you still have it, it's been an unpleasant uh, couple of weeks in a huge way. So I'm not talking about all companies uh, in any way, shape, or form. But, uh, but you know, certainly in, in this end of the segment, in, in this end of the technology uh, universe and uh, in companies associated with semiconductors and also with AI, it's been a heady time by and large. It, it really is amazing to see. And that has pushed the indexes because technology companies dominate now, uh, specifically the NASDAQ, and, and that has always been true. But now with the S&P 500, when you look at the, the largest companies inside of the S&P 500, which by the way, S&P 500 market cap weighted index. Index, bigger companies, larger influence over the uh, over the index movement. Uh, you're looking at all technology companies, or I shouldn't say that. That's not that's not precisely true. About 90% of the top 25 are technology companies. So when you're looking at that and what's going to move it, so if technology companies are doing well, that's what's going to move the S&P 500 index, and that's part of the danger of mapping your portfolio against an index. 
you really want to know, A, what's in the index, and B, how it moves. Because you may be thinking, well, if the S&P 500 index, well, I own 500 companies. You do. Uh, actually, you don't own them directly. You own a fund that owns them. But you, you have the price experience of those 500 companies. However, when you look at what dominates the, uh, the movement of that, of that index, it's not all 500 companies. It's about a dozen. I'll, I'll give you 20, uh, meaning that 20 companies basically move the S&P 500 index. So even though you do may have price experience with 500, really it's 20 companies, the 20 largest ones, which are moving it the most. That's very important to know. Very, we, We've done previous segments on that here on dollars and cents, but very, very important to keep that in mind. So when we're looking at the, the overall index ex- experience here uh, it, since January 1st, I mean, last year, very strong as measured by the most popular stock indices, the S&P 500 index, Dow Jones Industrial Average, NASDAQ Composite, very strong. And now we've come into two months, gosh, we're in month three already of uh, of 2024. Man, it's uh, it's amazing. Time flies. But when we're looking at what the index experience has been here for the first couple of months and couple of days, uh, it, it has been positive again, but primarily because of what I'm describing with these large technology companies. Very important to keep in mind. Very, very important to keep in mind because there are companies that haven't done well. And newsflash, there are companies in the technology realm which haven't done well, including some of the ones that you probably know the best. I mean, I, I, I'm going to go right to the big one, Apple. I know. If you're, an, if you're a holder of Apple stock, so far this year, I know, shock. It actually is negative this year. Now, it's only negative about 5% from where it was uh, to start out the year. But it is negative so far this year. Here's another one. And I know you know this one. So that's why I'm bringing it up here because sometimes the news aspect of things can just focus on those things that are positive and leave aside some other things uh, when it comes to to the stock market, especially when it's going well uh, in this instance. Google. Google also negative for this year. Now, not huge. We're not talking about down 25% or anything like that. But it has uh, had a notably, neg- uh, I should say notably, single digits. But it has been negative this year in light of other spaces which have been incredibly positive. So when we're, we're mapping those kinds of things together, that gives us a little, it broadens our, our view, if you will. It gives us a little better picture about where things truly are. And that's very important, especially when you're looking at your portfolio. Make sure as you're looking at your portfolio that you're not overweighted. I know, especially when things, you know, certain parts of your portfolio are doing well. This is the amazing part. Linear thought, here it comes again. Uh, when things are doing well, let's go buy more. It's, it's going up. Implication you know, or the implied thought behind that being it's going to continue to go up. And you might be right. No doubt about it. You might be right for a while. But nothing, I know, this is simple, hear me, nothing goes up forever. Nothing. We, this is a cyclical beast when we're talking about the stock market or bond markets or currency markets or commodities markets. All of them are cyclical beasts. There are time when they increase, there are time when they decrease, and for the most part, we're somewhere in between all the time. So it's very, very important as you're looking at your portfolio, make sure that you don't get overweighted. And I get it. It can happen very easily. Last year was a great example of that. You may have had parts of your portfolio, your investments, which did amazingly well. And you had other parts, maybe, which weren't, uh, weren't nearly as robust in terms of their performance. What can happen in there is that you get di- uh, unbalanced, if you will, or dislocation from, from your strategy because you have certain things that have done very, very well, which now are a larger portion of your portfolio, other things which didn't do as well, which may be a smaller portion. That's why, for some folks, in certain, in certain strategies, rebalancing may be wise. Not saying it's wise for you. Everybody's situation is unique. But very, very important to at least consider that as part of your portfolio management. If you don't do that, you're at risk as things pull back, especially in things that may have increased dramatically in value. You're at risk of a larger amount of downside because those things tend to move more dramatically in the other direction as well. So very, very important to keep that kind of thing in mind. A lot of folks don't do it. I get it. When things are going up, you're like, let's get more implied thought. It's going to keep going. Maybe, right? You know what's interesting is on the negative, on the the other end of things, there isn't nearly the same kind of enthusiasm to go buy things on the cheap whenever things go down. Interesting happens every time. It's amazing. Linear thought. I know you hear me say that all the time. But it's true. Very, very true. All right. We're uh, rapidly approaching the end of our time together here on Dollars and Cents, presented by North Main Financial. Lightning fast recap. I mean, what did you get today? You got airlines and, uh, and crossbody bags. You got Wendy's cheeseburgers. You got Dartmouth men's basketball. And, uh, and then you got some crazy markets. Been an interesting time and a lot of fun as always. Appreciate so much you hanging with us here on Dollars and Cents presented by North Main Financial. Tune in next week here on WSIC.
serving you better than ever before. WSIC, Statesville, 